Do narcissists love animals? This is a question that I often receive from individuals because they can understand how the narcissist views them in a problematic way and doles out devaluing behavior against the victim. But they look at the narcissist and see the way that uh, he's tickling Fido's belly and the fact that the narcissist got upset over Tiddle's death. The fact that the narcissist appears to take great pride in taking Wolfie for a walk or showing off snookums at the local dog show. Whether it's a pet alligator, pet snake, dog, cat, gerbil, chimpanzee, tarantula. Of course, some of those items you wouldn't go anywhere near, others that you would. But is it the case that whether the narcissist has a dog or a cat or a parrot or a horse, that they seem to lavish time, money and energy over, that seems to positively delight the narcissist in some way, is it the case that the narcissist actually loves the animal? Of course, some of you will have witnessed the narcissist being cruel to an animal. It might be uh, an animal that's been shot, for instance, hunted down in some way because the narcissist enjoys hunting. It might be that the cruelty is not so much in terms of blood sports, um, clean kill, not deemed necessarily to be cruel, but rather tormenting an animal in some way, whether it's getting hold of a dog and holding it up by its lead so it starts to choke, um, drowning kittens, um, breaking the legs of animals and so forth, overworking an animal in some capacity on a farm. You may well have witnessed that kind of cruelty from a narcissist, and therefore it's quite clear that the narcissist has no love for that animal to exhibit such apparent cruelty. But what about where the narcissist grooms that pet, cuddles it, takes it for walks, feeds it, looks after it, talks to it? Does the narcissist actually have the capacity to love an animal, even if they don't, with regard to a human being? Well, in short, the answer, of course, is no, because you must understand that since the individual is a narcissist, then they cannot have any capacity to love. Love is founded on emotional empathy, and we do not have any. And therefore, the narcissist does not love that animal. It is a simple equation. Once you have established that that individual is a narcissist, they are devoid of love. There is no emotional empathy. What is going on, then, with regard to this behaviour? Well, what you have to understand is, this is similar in the sense of the way that you were given a golden period. Weren't you treated rather well? You were groomed, albeit in a different way. You had your tummy tickled in some respects. You were fed treats. You were taken places. You were showed off, weren't you? Because, of course, you are regarded as a pet in the same way that an animal is regarded as a pet. Do listen to the video Pet for more about that. So, the apparent decent treatment towards that animal is only part of, in effect, the equivalent of the way that we can be benign towards you. But then you might say, well, he appears to always treat the animal well. You don't necessarily know that. It may be occasions when you're not there and the animal is mistreated. But let us assume that doesn't occur. Doesn't that show that there is always repeated decent behaviour towards the animal, that there must be something more going on? Well, again, understand that with certain secondary and tertiary sources, a narcissist can repeatedly behave in a pleasant way towards that individual as part of the facade. They can behave that way towards their secondary or tertiary sources because they don't threaten the control, or if they do, the narcissism guides the narcissist with a response that doesn't threaten the facade, so there is a benign response. Possibly, of course, meeting out a malign response away from prying eyes. So the friend of the narcissist, because they contribute to the facade, they don't see the narcissist often enough to affect control, and if they do, then it has to be dealt with in a benign way to maintain the facade, and the fact that their fuel does not get stale and does not 
cause problems with regard to reduced provision because the narcissist does not rely on it as much as they would do with the primary source means that this secondary source friend or family member or colleague is largely treated well and enjoys an extended golden period. The animal can be viewed in a similar way. The animal is yet but another object that is being utilised by the narcissist for his or her purposes. The animal is not loved because the narcissist cannot love, but the narcissist can demonstrate through cognitive empathy apparent affection, goodwill, kindness, liking towards that animal. To do so, of course, is often done for the purposes of the facade, to demonstrate, look, I am a kind person, I look after animals. Furthermore, behaving in such a manner is often done to triangulate you by spending all of one's time with the animal, by doting on it, petting it, by buying it treats, grooming it, and all of those other things, looking after its environment and habitat at the expense of spending time with you, you are devalued by the narcissist triangulating you with an animal. Therefore, not only are you not afforded good time with the narcissist, you're also being told you rank below an animal, provoking and controlling behaviour, indeed. So the narcissist will utilise an animal, possibly because they're treated well, because they provide a benefit in terms of, if it's a farm, the animal can be used in terms of um, sale for uh, as, a, as a stud on a stud farm, or for the sale of meat, uh, for the sale of wool, etc. So a farm animal provides a residual benefit in a practical sense. More traditional domestic pets are, are utilised for the purposes of the facade, for a means by which to triangulate. The narcissist is also able to obtain fuel from the animal. Of course, if a dog is just yapping away in the background, that provides no fuel to the narcissist because it's not occasioned by the narcissist. But if an animal bounds up and is licking and all over the narcissist in a, in a display of affection, and that will provide the narcissist with the degree of fuel. Similarly, if the narcissist comes in and kicks the dog, causing it to whimper, that will provide the narcissist with fuel. So the narcissist is able to obtain fuel from certain animals because they are able to occasion a response as a consequence of the activity of the narcissist. So the narcissist's involvement with that animal is partially about gaining fuel. There is the ability, of course, to assert control over it, it's to utilise that animal with regard to triangulation with, say, the intimate partner, primary source, or other secondary sources, to utilise it in terms of the facade for demonstrating, look, I am a good person. To also utilise it as a device for control by saying to people, you need to look after my dog while I'm on holiday, you do it for me if you love me, etc. So the animal provides a number of opportunities for the narcissist with regard to potential fuel provision, the assertion of control, potentially even character traits, in terms of, this is a well-disciplined dog because of me, or he's an intelligent dog because of the way that I've tra trained him, or that is a beautiful, uh, this is a beautiful uh, aquarium full of uh, exotic fish because of the way that I've tended for them and selected them, and also with regard to residual benefits, as mentioned. The narcissist, of course, can be cruel to animals, mistreat them because of the absence of emotional empathy. And where the narcissist treats an animal well, this isn't born out of any love for the animal. It is born out of a continued need to manipulate, either manipulating the animal or, more usually, for the purposes of manipulating a, a human by, being in relation to the particular animal. So narcissists can give you the appearance of loving animals as part of being a manipulative action towards you, the maintenance of the facade, and of course, the use of cognitive empathy. But be under no illusion. There is no love for this animal. This is a narcissist that is dealing with them. Of course, some narcissists have no interest in animals, I being one. I find them dirty, annoying, and they get in the way. Some narcissists are obviously cruel to them because, of course, that will enable them to draw fuel from the animal and, in other instances, provokes a reaction from somebody else. Don't do that. 
causing shock and alarm, which allows the assertion of control and the drawing of fuel. And other narcissists have nothing to do with animals because they find them a hindrance and an encumbrance and therefore do nothing with them. But narcissists do not love animals in the same way that narcissists do not love anybody. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.